a huge success, but the Chief Minister says he was moved to tears at the sight of people divided. Political message, the Self-Determination for Gibraltar group pleaded with a t pleased with the attendance at its rally. And re-establishing the route, the first Manchester Gibraltar flight arrives tomorrow. The top stories tonight on Newswatch. <laughs> Good evening. The Chief Minister has described the National Day events at John McIntosh Square as a huge success, but added that he was moved to tears at the sight of people divided on National Day. Meanwhile, the Mayor, Mommy Levy, said this was the second most special day of his life after his inauguration as Mayor. Well, if uh, one had to pick uh, a pivotal moment for any National Day, it would be this. Of course, it's different this year as the Piazza, but it's the same release of the balloons as ever. This is the Piazza, this is where the uh, official civic events have, have taken place, and uh, this is what uh, the Mayor, Mommy Navi, had to say. On this, our National Day, we, the people of Gibraltar, here gathered as a community, Remember and celebrate past generations of Gibraltarians and others who by their efforts, sacrifices and determination made today's Gibraltar possible. We celebrate and honour our country and its successes. We celebrate our inalienable right as a people to determine the future of Gibraltar, our homeland, in accordance with our wishes, rights and aspirations. And finally, on this Gibraltar National Day, we send greetings to all Gibraltarians around the world and we greet and thank all friends of Gibraltar in Britain and elsewhere. It's something which I can't describe in words. It's out of this world. I feel more than Queen Elizabeth does to have my people around me cheering and me mentioning all past good Gibraltarians. It's really like a dream. This is really my second day, best in my life. The first was the investment here. Now it's my second surrounded with so many people. The Chief Minister, who for the first time this year did not give an address on National Day, said the events at John McIntosh Square had been a huge success and had confirmed the square as having a special place in the heart of Gibraltarians. Well, I feel a little bit, uh, a little bit um, uh, different to how I normally feel on National Day, which is used to be uh, a, a, a main, one of the main political acts of my year which I've given up in, in, in an attempt uh, to unite all Gibraltarians on National Day, to try and take out the local party politics from it, to take out the we are with him, we are against him syndrome, uh, and to have what National Day should be, what National Day is in all democracies around the world, a time uh, where the people unite across political divides. You know, the opposition have many political differences with the government and they are perfectly entitled to have them in a democracy and indeed it's good that they should have them but they have 364 days of the year in which to prosecute those differences and I think it's a lack of respect for the people of Gibraltar and for Gibraltar itself that they have not been willing to do the people and the government of Gibraltar the courtesy on just one day of the year not to give full vent to their political frustrations, to their political differences, and to their desire always to be contradicting whatever the government decides by dividing Gibraltar today. I have been almost moved to tears at the sight of seeing Gibraltarians on National Day, some walking in one direction, others walking in the other direction, divided unnecessarily and stupidly by the GSOP and its satellite organization, the SPGG, on our National Day. I don't think the people of Gibraltar are going to readily forgive them for that.
Well, having said that, uh, are you pleased with the turnout here at uh, John McIntosh Square? Today has demonstrated that John McIntosh Square still has a very special place in the hearts of the people of Gibraltar. This is where, for decades and decades and decades, the people of Gibraltar have come to celebrate collectively, to protest collectively, to demonstrate our determination collectively, and I think this has been a huge success. There are lessons to be learned. I think the, uh, the uh, PA system did not do justice to the wonderful performance of the choir of St. Dan's School singing the Gibraltarian songs. For next year, I promise that the, uh, that, that will be uh, uh, radically improved. But I'm glad and I wish to express my heartfelt gratitude to the people of Gibraltar who have come here in their overwhelming, overwhelming majority uh, in support of the official National Day celebrations and I hope they will have enjoyed the rest of the day by the time it's finished. The Chief Minister this year has also forsaken the privilege of calling for the release of the 30,000 red and white balloons. That duty also fell to the Mayor who ended his address with the following words. God bless you, Gibraltar! God bless you, Gibraltar! God bless you, Gibraltar belongs to the Gibraltarians. That was the main message at the political rally organized by the Self-Determination for Gibraltar group. The group's acting chairman, Dennis Cardona, was the first to address the crowd. He was followed by PDP leader Keith Asobardi, Liberal Party leader Joseph Garcia and GSLP leader Joe Bosano. Christine Podesta was at Casemate Square. It was not known till the last minute where the speakers would be given their addresses from. As it turned out, the stage was the ICC. How many were present is disputed. Thankfully, with television, a picture speaks a thousand words. The event has given everyone much to talk about in the lead-up to it, and true to the RGP's word, there was not a single police officer to be seen at the event. With the emphasis on unity, Dennis Cardona made a call for differences of opinion to be kept for the other 364 days of the year. He said the SDGG now boasted over a thousand members, with many of these having joined in the last month. Mr. Cardona added the group would be there for as long as the people wanted it. He regretted the event had not counted with total political support, but said the SDG would work tirelessly to convince those who had not supported it this time so everyone could work together. He concluded by saying they would already be booking casements for next year. I'm ecstatic, really, really happy with the way people have responded, uh, especially given the circumstances in the lead-up to the event. Uh, and obviously uh, the fact that people have turned out in these numbers confirms the, the need for such a political rally in Gibraltar. The politicians that spoke at the event all concurred that the rally will go from strength to strength and would like to see total cross-party support for it. There is continuing importance uh, in a political rally. Look, uh, countries have National Day political rallies after independence. We are a nation that, is, that still has its rights under assault. We need to carry on this campaign. Of course we are better off than under the joint sovereignty days, but we must carry on this fight. Uh, there is still a sovereignty claim, and until those issues are dealt with vigorously and they disappear once and for all, we must carry on and remind everybody that National Day has different dimensions. A cultural one, an entertainment one, a leisure one, but also an important political one that must be delivered by politicians. Well, I think it shows that there is a need for the event. I mean, those people are questioning whether there was a need for an event of this nature or not. We've now shown by the number of people that turned out that there is a need for it, that people do feel strongly about their national day, that they feel we are a nation and we have a right to decide our own future and to a full and proper decolonization. In his address, party leader Keith Hasabadri said that if in government, the Progressive Democratic Party would organize a cross-party rally to which all leaders would be invited. Keith Hasabadri described the constitution as a massive step forward, but said he aspired to go further still. This is the first time that you will hear several political leaders speak, but it should not be the last. It should not be the last at which we are united because the work must go on, because we must carry on trying to get our rights recognized. Until the day that our rights are recognized, we should not rest. I want to see a day 
that there is no sovereignty claim over Gibraltar. I want to see a day where our right to self-determination is recognized by all. I want to see a day where our rights as a people are recognized by all. I want to be here in this square on that day. No. Liberal Party leader Joseph Garcia agreed with the views expressed so far that the fight needed to continue as long as a Spanish sovereignty claim Spanish still there. Claim, the Spanish claim to our country is as alive today as it was 16 years ago. We must remain vigilant and we must remain on our guard. We reject the attempt by governments of Spain, past and present, to take over the sovereignty of our country. This National Day, like every other National Day, we celebrate the fact that Gibraltar is ours. We celebrate the fact that Gibraltar belongs to us. We celebrate our nationhood. We celebrate that they have, we have lived on this rock for more than 300 years, which is longer than many countries have existed. We have the same right as them to a full and proper decolonized status. The loudest cheers and the warmest welcome had been reserved for opposition leader Joe Osano. In this, his and first National Day address in over 10 years, he thanked the, the self-determination group, referendum. saying Gibraltar owed it an enormous debt. With I emphasis on the fact that the Gibraltar would never Gibraltar. be Spanish, he added he would keep Over going to address the United Nations Committee on Decolonization years. as long as Gibraltar was on the agenda. And today, as the first day I stood for election in 1972, I tell you, not one grain of sand of Eastern Beach will be Spanish. No sharing of our airport, no sharing of anything that belongs to us. Spain ends at the frontier and the nation that is Gibraltar begins there and ends at Europa Point. All of it, all of it is ours. All of it belongs to us and no one else. The rally, according to the self-determination for Gibraltar Group, has shown the people's determination to exercise their constitutional and democratic rights. It adds those present witness the truly cross-party nature of the event and the glorious feeling of unity it added to the day. I think it's been a, a fantastic turnout given the difficulties that have been put in the way. Look, people are used to coming to a rally which is really, for many years it was organized by the SGG and then gradually the GSD government took more and more away from the SGG. You remember the balloons in the beginning was done by them, the fireworks was done by them. Gradually everything has been taken away until this year the only thing that was left was the rally and now the rally has been taken away. Last year they made it impossible for uh, Willy Serfati to speak from the platform because they would not allow the SDG to say from the platform where it disagreed with the government. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong, even on a day of unity, that people should say where on matters of principle they think the other side has made a mistake and the judgment is wrong. And, and therefore unity, as I said in my message, is not achieved by suppressing dissenting views. Unity is achieved by trying to make your views as compatible with the views of the rest, but recognizing that there will always be differences, because if you make a judgment of something, your judgment is not going to be identical with mine. If we look at the, at the same thing from the same place, we will see something different. Mr. Vosano agreed there was an element of party politics, with GSLP members of the case notes and GSD supporters at John McIntosh Square. He added, however, that he felt there'd been a difference of approach, with the opposition not having told its supporters not to carry on for the mayor's declaration. Personally, he did Thank not attend much. events at the piazza. For me, going to the piazza as a political leader means associating myself with a message which has got seven points. And although Mr. Carrana said in an interview in GBC that everything about National Day is contained there, the answer is the word self-determination does not appear anywhere in those seven points. The word uh, uh, 
nation doesn't appear, the word decolonization doesn't appear, the rejection of the Spanish sovereignty claim doesn't appear. Many did move on from the rally to the mayor's declaration. In a press release today, the self-determination for Gibraltar group says Gibraltarians have again proved they're part of a tolerant and respectful society. And after the break, the lighter side of National Day as we bring you a report on the other events. But as red and white becomes yesterday's news, life goes on. So stay with us for the other stories that have made the news today. See you in a couple of minutes. at the new and exciting Ocean Village Promenade. Join the E-Club and get benefits, gifts and discounts all year round. Esprit is open seven days a week, Monday to Saturday from 12.30 till 9 at night and from 3 till 8 on Sundays. Esprit at Ocean Village. Hello and welcome back to Newswatch. Before and after the formalities of the day, various family and youth events were held around the rock. There were discos, barbecues and other traditional fun events. Our reporter, Michael Beltran, was there. The early start to the day meant the traditional fancy dress party. This year there were six participants and those who came first, second and third were amongst the more inspired creations. Jaylene and Kylie Gaiviso were third with their Coca-Cola factory. Jesse Chibol came second with his Gibraltar sailor suit and boat in tow. And first place was given to Matthew Godali, who was dressed as Gibraltar Mayor Momi Levy and even had his own city hall. Well, as Priscilla said, it was very, very hard because all of them had their own originality and were different in every way and they're all so cute and look so nice that it's really hard to choose to choose one but you have to choose one and I think we, we made the right choice. All eyes were on the street party next at John McIntosh Square and an innovation this year saw the food stalls at the square set up by government with the proceeds going to charity. This proved to be a very popular addition to the festivities. It's great. It makes you um, feel more Gibraltarian with all the Gibraltarian food and everything. It's really nice, really nice, um, different thing to do for National Day. I think it's a brilliant idea. We sell it. We have loads of things to sell, but it seems everything is going to go. And uh, what's proving to be more popular? Is everyone just taking a bit of everything? What's popular? The guarantee that's popular, but at large, everybody's taking a little bit of everything and trying one of each and then perhaps coming for the one they like best. With the balloons promptly released and the cheers subsiding, it was time to have fun. The typical structure for National Day is one of celebrating national pride wherever you are. Casemates, usually the venue for the day's main festivities, was this year the site of a fun day for youngsters. Locals also made the most of the restaurants and bars at Casemates Square and the good weather. Well, we went to the piazza, went to see the balloons, but they flew the other way, so we missed them. So we had to run after them to be able to see them. And now we've come over so that the little ones can have some fun over here. Um, we're having a little walk around yeah. National Day. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! 
Town centre was, as always, a hive of activity and there was even some accompanying music. Once again, Governor's Parade proved to be a popular venue for people to relax and soak up the sun with some live music. Another special moment in yesterday's National Day celebrations was the unveiling of the triumphant welcome, a painting by Ambrose Avellano. The unveiling took place in the newly refurbished exhibition room on the ground floor of the main guard building in John McIntosh Square. Hosted by the Heritage Trust, the painting depicts the scene on Tuesday the 24th of September 1963, when Sir Joshua Hassan as Chief Minister and Peter Isola returned from addressing the United Nations Committee in New York on the constitutional development of Gibraltar. A fitting moment considering the official celebrations this year were held at the same venue the address was held in 1963. Last year saw a notable absence of events for youth. This year, however, the King's Bastion Leisure Centre provided entertainment for both family and youth. Well-known local DJs supplied the music at Boyd's and there was free ice skating for youngsters. The Gibraltar Bus Company also held their own party, one of many to be held in various venues around the Rock. The de Sousa family held their traditional barbecue party at La Morna, inviting guests to donate money that will go towards the GBC Open Day. Last year I think it was about 4,500 or something, so of course we always want, um, you know, we're always aiming for more. So, uh, you know, we're quite happy, and you know, people here in Gibraltar are very generous. So, and I think it's gone pretty well. The box looks uh, quite full. So, um, now we're quite happy with the way things have gone. And it wouldn't be summer without the odd phone party held at the youth centre. After the National Day rock concert held the night before, there was more live music at the Waterport Coach Park, courtesy of DJs and bands. I know I was coming here at Coach Park, you listen to a bit of music, maybe go to the leisure centre later on and then see the fireworks tonight. Drinking. Uh, drinking, basically. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Having fun, eating, uh, dancing. Yeah. Uh, well, I came here at 11 to set up because uh, from 4 to 7 today, uh, I'm going to DJ. My friend's DJing first. He's got. He's doing the first hour, and then I have a two-hour set. After that, I guess uh, I watch the other band that's on, and then spend the rest of the day celebrating. And hopefully, you know, have a too rough of a night because I work tomorrow. We came down to the piazza, we saw the balloons and that, and then we've just come back from um, Marina. Mama, I want my ice the lunch cream. there. And now we're going to have a little bit of fun. I want my ice cream. At the Grand Parade car park, the popular Verbena was a hotspot for people of all ages to enjoy some food and drink and to relax after a day of celebrations. It was evident everywhere you turned, there were events being held around the rock. Youth and family firmly catered for as Gibraltar celebrated in its own personal, unique style its 17th National Day. And just as Gibraltar didn't forget its soldiers in Iraq, they didn't forget the Rock either. Their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel John Bedith and Regimental Sergeant Major Gerald Fitzgerald joined them over a three-day period for a much-anticipated celebration of National Day. A barbecue was arranged for the troops who also watched video messages from the commander of British forces, the mayor and their families. The main message to the men from the CO, apart from congratulating them on the outstanding work being undertaken there, was a reassurance that they could count on fantastic support from friends and family back home.